Hello everyone, welcome to this week's tutorial on our introduction to remote sensing of the environment. Today we're working with SAR data in Google Earth Engine and we'll be using C-band data from Sentinel-1. For those of you who are new to the series, you can find the link to this tutorial in the information tab of this video. The objective of the lab is to deepen your understanding of synthetic aperture radar and learn how to visualize different composites within the Google Earth Engine environment. So our first step is to open up Google Earth Engine. You can find that at code.earthengine.google.com. And we're going to start by first typing Sentinel-1 into the search bar and reading up a bit more information on the satellite. So we just come here, type Sentinel-1, and under the rasters, you'll see here Sentinel-1 SAR grid. Click on that, and we see that this image collection refers to the Sentinel-1 um, data, C-band synthetic aperture radar, ground range detected. That's what the GRD acronym is for. Now Sentinel-1 provides data from a dual polarized C-band synthetic aperture radar and we have a number of options because of that. We have VV which is single copolarization, that is vertical transmit, vertical receive, HH, horizontal transmit, horizontal receive. Then we have different combinations with um, vertical transmit, horizontal receive, or horizontal transmit, vertical receive. The data that's available on Earth Engine has already been processed for thermal noise removal, radiometric calibration, and terrain correction using the SRTM 30 meter product. There's a link here where you can find out more information about the pre-processing. And um, in the table here, you can find more information on each band that is available, including its spatial resolution. In this table, we have a lot of information, um, different metadata about the satellite imagery. A couple of important ones, the instrument mode operates in either the intermetric wide swath, extra wide swath, or strip map. Clicking these links will give you more information about them. We also have the orbit properties pass, which tells us whether the satellite was in an ascending or descending direction in the orbit. Um, this is a useful page. You can come back to here any time. Remember that if you click this tab, it'll take you to an even more uh, detailed sheet describing the satellite mission telling you properties about the bands and the images, as well as the terms of use. Okay, coming back to our lab, um, we know that background on, on the satellite now. Uh, if we come down to step two, just a reminder that we have different polarizations. Um, we're going to work with some Sentinel-1 imagery, and you can do this in any area you're interested in. If you want to choose a local area in your own country, please do that. For the purposes of demonstration, we're going to work in the Tully region of North Queensland, Australia. I want to navigate to Tully, and we just type that in. Here we have Tully, Queensland, Australia. Click there, and here we are. Um, just in between town, Townsville and Cairns. This is the Great Barrier Reef along here, and this is an important agricultural region in Australia. Lots of sugarcane, banana plantations. That's why I picked it for this lab. Now, um, what we want to do is add a, a point geometry and call it Tully. So I will come over here, click on the point geometry, place that close to my, my main area of interest. I'm going to rename that ROI, um, abbreviation for region of interest. 
Now, um, the next step is that we're going to filter the image collection. The Sentinel-1 image collection um, is Copernicus S1 grid. We've been working a lot with Sentinel-2 products um, from the optical multispectral sensor. This bit of code is a bit more detailed. Um, I'm doing two things here. First, we're going to filter the collection for the VV product from the descending tract. And we're going to create a new variable, a variable called collection VV. So we're going to query the image collection Copernicus S1 grid. We're then going to filter for the, the swath mode that we want, um, the polarization that we want, and we're choosing the descending orbit here. Importantly, we're going to filter by the ROI, and we're going to select out the VV band. That's because we want the vertical transmit, vertical receive. We're going to print that collection to the console, and we're going to do exactly the same thing except for the VH. So we can just copy this, paste that into our script window, hit the run button, and you'll see in the console that two different image collections have been computed. They both have 166 elements because essentially it's the same image, we're just choosing different bands. First one is the VV, and the second one is the VH. Um, next step here is to navigate to the console and look at the information we've printed. And I can do that just by coming here, clicking on this drop-down arrow next to Features. And here we have each image listed, and we can see the dates that they come from. So this means that we have 166 images intersecting this point. And this is the full Sentinel-1 archive. So this is all the images that are available. Um, in order to always have a consistent map view, it's always good practice to center the map object around your ROI. And remember that the zoom scale ranges from 1 to 22. So let's just quickly do that. Hit run again. That's just zooming us in, so we'll all be looking at exactly the same image. Um, but now we actually want to map some of this Sentinel data to the map view. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a variable called VV, and this variable is going to be the median of the collection VV. So all these, intersecting this point, we have these 166 images. I could pick out one of them to display, but what I'm doing instead is that I'm taking that full stack of 166 images. For every pixel, we're going to use all those values and calculate the median value for each pixel. And we can do that with a very short, um, ah, sorry. We can do that with a very short snippet, this one here. Paste it in, hit run, and now we've created this variable. If we want to plot it, we simply use map add layer. Now I've pre-selected some visualization parameters, um, minimum minus 14, maximum minus 7. Um, you'll want to experiment depending on where you are. I'm going to hit run. You'll see in the layers tab we have VV now, and that tells us it's still loading. Here it comes. And this is our backscatter intensity image, shown in grayscale. Um, whiter areas have a higher backscatter intensity. Darker areas have a lower backscatter intensity. Um, we could adjust this. We could give it a color palette, um, but we're going to get to that later. Just have a quick look around. Have a look at which landscape elements are reflecting um, strongly. See that water very black, very dark, not much coming off there. Uh, depending on the hill slopes though, and certain vegetation types um, sticking out much more than others. Remember the beauty of Earth Engine, 
we can flick over to a, a satellite, um, a high-res satellite view underneath, and we can click on and off, have a look at these different, if, if you're interested in a particular patch, we can zoom in, see that we have patch of native forest here, which shows up um, quite strongly in the in the radar view, so showing up here in white. Whereas we have some plantations over here, um, also quite strongly reflective, um, so high backscatter intensity, versus other areas like this, which we flick that off, it's more of a bare field paddock, less vertical structure um, to, to scatter that radar signal. Okay, um, you have the steps here in the tutorial. Um, we're going to do the same thing with the VH layer. So first we're going to calculate that median value for all the pixels by creating variable VH equals collection VH median. Uh, remember, we, we could make this the minimum or the maximum or the mean, but the median is a good choice. Uh, map add layer, hit run. Now we'll have two layers in our layer tab. First the VV, and now VH will come on top of it. Should follow shortly. Here it is. Uh, a little bit darker overall. Remember, you can play with these min and max values, bearing in mind that the range for these is from minus 50 to um, positive 1. And you'll need to play around. But a good way to do that is using the inspector, clicking anywhere on the image, you'll get the values, and you can click around uh, for your particular image and, and choose a suitable range. Okay, so I want you to spend a bit of time flicking um, the VH on and off, and try and have a look and see where it responds to different vegetation types differently to the VV. Now one of the most interesting things with this type of, of data with, with SAR being available, depending where you are in the world, some places it's every three days, others every six days, in Australia roughly every 10 days, um, we can do really nice work with temporal composites. So what we've plotted here is the full archive. We haven't filtered by date. This is just every image that's been collected and we're plotting the median pixel value. But if you read down here, we're going to experiment by making an RGB composite from the SAR data. Um, but, and this is going to be a temporal composite. So if you have a look at my script here, we're creating a three band stack by selecting from different periods, months of the year. So the first one, variable VV1, we're going to, from our image collection, we're going to filter by date. And the date ranges that I've chosen here are uh, 1st of January through to end of April. And we're going to take the median value for that period. Then we're going to do the same, but from 1st of May through to end of August. And then the same again, except from beginning September through to end of December. So these are, you know, three periods of the year. And if we copy that, paste it in here. And hit run. Now, of course, depending on your area, you might want to modify these to make, make sense, depending on the seasons in your particular area of interest. Um, this is just to illustrate what we can do. The next step is then to add to the map. And be careful with the syntax here. Um, map add layer. We're going to add into the red channel VV1, but we haven't actually made a stack yet. We've just we've created the individual layers. So the way I'm plotting it here is, is achieving that stack um, in the map itself. So VV1, we're going to add bands, VV2, add bands, VV3. That means we're going to have a three band composite. We're going to specify the min and the max values. We're going to call this season composite. Go 
going to hit run. We should now have three layers in our layer tab, VV, um, VH, and the seasonal composite. And as this image comes up, you can see it's, it's colorful, it's an RGB image. And take a moment to think about what this is actually showing. So in the red channel, we're putting in the median backscatter intensity over the full, over a, um, a four month period. It's from, from last year, 2018. So this, in the red channel, we have backscatter intensity for the first four months of the year. In the green channel, we have backscatter intensity for the second four months of the year. And in the blue channel, we have backscatter intensity for the last four months of the year. And why I picked an agricultural landscape for this is it's always a nice example because agricultural fields are constantly changing through the year, uh, different cropping routines, different harvesting times. And we see that played out here. If we zoom in, we just got this really spectacular, um, colorful mosaic of, of different fields. And this, this shows us in this temporal um, composite that, that these fields have been changing through the year. Now you might want to play around with this. You might want to adjust the dates, um, but spend a bit of time looking at, at the composite, um, comparing it, for example, to the, the single band VV or VH layers. I'm going to switch off uh, VV and VH. Once the composite comes up, um, we can see here great variability among these fields. This is really a wonderful tool for looking at um, temporal dynamics in landscapes. So after having done that, I'd like you to try the same thing for VH. And then you can also experiment with mixing um, VV bands and VH bands into an RGB composite. Lastly, and the last task for the lab today, I want you to think about how this information differs to optical data that we've been using for so far and how it could complement it. What would be the advantages of um, utilizing both as radar data sets as well as optical multispectral data sets. So I hope, I hope you found that useful. Um, we will be doing more SAR tutorials, uh, but this is a nice starter. Use these scripts to play around, have a look at some different areas around the globe. Thanks very much and see you next week. Cheers.